Can you see? Can you see? You can't? No. I'm... Are you logged in as you or as the flying unicorn? No, I'm flying... I'm logged in as flying uh -huh. unicorn. Can you see me? Wait a minute. Hold on. Can Hold you see? On. I got a black screen, so maybe it's trying. Okay, I'm gonna turn you off. Hi, <laughs> it's Jennifer Snyder for the Flying Unicorns. Um, I had some technical difficulty, as I think you know. Uh, I guess I didn't have an update on my Chrome browser, so uh, no you stream tonight. No you stream for me. Um, but anyway, so I'm just gonna cut to the chase. Um, tonight I'm making Halloween decor or Thanksgiving decor, some autumn decor. Um, next week is song. I just want to throw that, interject that in there. Next week's song will be, um, doing the Ustream show. And I'm sure she won't have technical difficulties like I did. Um, okay. So let's just go ahead and flip the camera around so I can show you my project. Because, um, I'm a feeling a little crazy right now. Let's see. Ah, at least, <laughs> at least that's successful. Um. So this is my pumpkin. I'm going to hold it. You know, I'm really sorry for the frazzled start tonight. Okay, this is my pumpkin. Um, this was the off-the-page project in the October kit. Um, so if some of you haven't done anything with your pumpkin tonight, or yet, maybe you can just follow along for some ideas. Um, it's a rather large pumpkin. It's... Uh, it says it's like six inches. It's supposed to be a six inches pumpkin, but I don't know. My eye says it looks a little bigger, but um, it does. It says six by eight. So here is <laughs> here's the paper mache dairies pumpkin. Um, so what? How I started this first? Um, when I'm doing something like this, I use tacky spray. I don't use glue because um, I'm going to get a better coverage and I'm not going to have the glue leaking out of the holes in the burlap. And that is what I use to cover my pumpkin. Uh, so I'm going to put the tacky glue aside for a sec and I'm going to pull out my burlap. Um, this, as you can see, my pumpkin is a little tan. Uh, just got a nice little, um, how about toasted almond color? That's what I want to call it. Um, and I'm going to, okay, I was going to turn the volume up a little bit, but I think I'm fine. Um, the burlap that I chose is more of a white, um, it's like a yellow, whitish kind of creamy burlap. That's what I chose on purpose. I could have chosen this darker burlap and it would have cut right to the chase and gotten me just a little bit closer to what I wanted because I actually wanted this darker but I decided whoops I decided sorry my um, spray adhesive fell I decided I wanted to start off light and show you how to make your project darker should you want uh, um, like a darker pumpkin um, and we're going to do that with a whole lot of color bloom mists tonight so I'm going to start spraying <laughs> and let's hope I don't spray my um keyboard or anything because this stuff is wicked wicked sticky oh my piece of burlap that I bought for this project is about a yard and when you cut when you buy a yard of burlap it's doubled over so it actually when you unfold it it's um, eh, like almost two yards it's a wonderful thing you have spare burlap for another project so I'm going to start from the bottom, and I'm not going to spray the whole thing. I'm going to spray in patches because um, the tacky spray dries really quickly. So you kind of got to work fast. Um, so, like I said, I'm going to spray in chunks. I'm going to uh, put out my burlap, and I'm just going to press it on. And Fold it over and just keep on spraying. 
Um, you can be kind of generous when you spray so that it does get some coverage. And I'm going to keep folding it in. Now, as you can see, it doesn't form to my pumpkin very well. So where it's not forming perfectly, I'm going to press it into the, um, the curves of the pumpkin. I don't know what they're called. Um, these parts. Whatever these are. This is where I want my folds to be because um, this is where I'm going to hide all of my uh, burlap sins, I guess. All of my excess burlap is going to be pushed and folded into those creases. Does that make sense? I think it does. But <laughs> then it's Chen speak. So. Ugh. Hold it. Huh. Cindy's calling me. <laughs> and my hands are sticky. Cindy, call back. Call back, Cindy. Um, okay. As you can see, I'm just kind of working it into those creases. No sense cutting the burlap. That's silly. Now this piece right here, I'm just going to fold it. Oh, fold it down. This making sense? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to have to take your silence tonight as the affirmative, since I've got no chat and um. You can't chat with me. So we're just going to say yes, Jen. Everything is making sense. Okay. Now, when I get to the top, I'm just kind of crunching it all around the top. Um, I'm not going to really care too much about the top because I have covered the top in the mess with my embellishments. And that is why paper crafters love embellishments. Oh, I must have gone out for a little bit. Cynthia just told me I was gone from the screen. What a night. I'll tell you. We're not having very good weather here anyways. Um, it's very stormy. And I'm wondering if um, we're having some atmospheric problems in my um, cable server is bad. That's always a possibility. Um, okay. Uh, um, so, you know what? I got to a point where I think I need to um, cut some excess. So, so I'm not measuring. I'm just cutting because it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to cut off some of this big old, old craziness. Um. You know, somebody said, could I use a circle? Uh, it probably could, but I didn't bother. Why bother? I didn't even know if a circle is going to help you because it's at some point you're still going to have an excess of fabric pulling up to the top. So all this I'm going to fold down. Um, add more. I tr Trust me, this is the most difficult part, just kind of engineering, um, engineering the burlap. But it's like prepping, it's akin to prepping um, a canvas. How about that? Oh, so, so, oh, that was a slick move. So I just, <laughs> I just took this and I'm, I'm uh, moving it up top. I'm just going to fold it up because I think it worked out better that way. And this, I'm going to just keep on, keep on working it up. And see, I'm, I really want to pull, um, the excess fabric into these creases and pumpkin crevices. Maybe that's that's what they are. Okay, I'm not going to worry about this yet. I have a little bit more left to work. And uh, then we'll be ready to move on. Sorry, I got to, you know, I got to keep on working fast and make up time for my tardiness. But I want to thank you for stopping in, whoever, whoever is here. Hi, everybody. Jen's a little frazzled. Okay. 
working my pumpkin all up to the top. And now I'm left with a few, just a few pieces of um, excess. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to hide it. This, this tacky glue, I'll tell you, is Oh, no! <laughs> My tacky glue days may be over there. <laughs> That's a little spray nozzle. That is not a good thing. That. <laughs> but we're going to still persevere and see if it... Oh, look, it sticks to my finger. That is... <laughs> Live entertainment at its at its most unusual. Okay. <laughs> I, I just can't take remove my finger off the spray nozzle. Um. Okay. I'm gonna have to. I'm. I, it's not working out for me right here. So I'm going to cut a little bit of it and rework it. There. 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 <laughs> oh, it's absurd. I'm cutting this off too. And I'm going to stick it in this. Just kind of patch that over like that. My hands are so <laughs> my hands are so sticky right now, it's uh kinda kinda nutty. Okay, actually, I'm almost done. It doesn't look like I am, but I am. Thank goodness. Just in time. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. I'm going to pull this side up. Make a cut. You know what? If this all looks kind of frustrating, it's it's really not. Um, don't be intimidated by the burlap. It's not going to get the best of you. I am going to win. Clearly, I'm going to win. Okay, so now this comes to the part where you've got to fold it like a Christmas present or a birthday present. Um, you know, you've got to make some slits, and you're just going to have to fold it over. There. Like that. And... Let's fold it over up here. Okay, now you say, Jen, it looks a little messy. And um, it does right at this point. Hold it. But fear not, I'm not done. Tack this side down. Because I thought that the pumpkin's little itty bitty nub of a stem was way too small. So I had to make my stem a little bigger. And that is why I need this excess. Ah, so Jen's mess of a pumpkin really turned out. Okay, so there is my pumpkin. It, it's, you think it's looking pretty bad, but it's not. It's actually looking qu quite nice. Because next, I'm pulling out the string. And this, I, I'm done for, I think forever with this bottle of tacky glue. I don't know. <laughs> Look at this is just the glue on my fingers isn't coming off until the weekend. I'm, I'm quite certain of that. Okay, so I'm going to start um, with my string, my hemp string, and I'm going to wind it around um, the top of the pumpkin, the stem. I'm just going to tie a knot. I'm going to wind it, tie a knot, and secure the string. Because I'm going to start, um, uh, I'm going to start working with the string and defining the pumpkin a little more with the string. So now I've got my string, and I'm going to take and just um, run the string around the pumpkin and make sure it gets in these creases or pumpkin, pumpkin lines, whatever they are. See how I'm doing that? And suddenly, suddenly it makes the pumpkin 
so much prettier. And kind of magically hides all these distracting fold um, marks from the burlap. See now here I have a fold right there, but you you won't be able to you just won't be able to see it. You'll be totally distracted by um, the hemp string. It's kind of like um, uh, like a magician's um, sleight of sleight of hand. <laughs> this is Jen's sleight of crafting. And I, I'm actually um, winding the twine around two times um, in each of the pumpkin folds. I don't know. Okay, so I'm, I've done that. I'm done with that. And I've, I've, I'm up to the top of the stem. I'm just going to continue winding around the stem a little bit more. Um, I think I can cut it now. Cut my hemp cord. Whoops. And I'm going to finish it off by just winding um, the excess around the stem. Thanks a lot <laughs> for whoever persevered and stuck with me and kind of like had their fingers crossed and like, is she going to show up? Is she going to um, stay upstairs and watch TV? Okay, I think I've got enough. <laughs> I've got enough string, so I'm just going to tie it off. But yeah, you know, that's the fun about a satellite I, and cable and live shows. Okay, there, I've tied it off. Let's see. And I'm going to leave a little bit of this excess because I kind of like it, and, but I'm going to cut some of it off, just the crazy, a little bit of the craziness. But I do want... A, a, um, a little long because I think it looks so much better like a pumpkin stem especially when I start adding um, my embellishments to it I can make it shorter if I want but we're gonna leave it long for now okay I've just got a few more um, I've got a few more things I need to tack down hoping the glue the spray adhesive cooperates Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. There. See? See how it just kind of like magically became tons prettier because of the big distraction in the hemp cord? It's like, ah, look over there. And, you know, my mess is cleaned up over here. It's, I don't, did that even make sense? Okay. So anyways, we're going to go on to the misting. Um... I want to make my pumpkin a little darker, um, a little more rustic looking. So I hauled out um, a whole bunch of my mists. I've got the Prima's um, tea stain. Um, let's start with the tea stain. This is tea stain. There you go. Um, the Prima Mint Color Blue Mists. If you haven't, um, for those of you who are new to the show um, these are wonderful they have wonderful coverage and this has a little bit of um, a sheen to it I guess uh, like a foil sheen um, and it's a very light color so I'm just gonna spray spray my pumpkin everything I want to make sure I get the um, stem as well This is the only time I really don't fear the spray and overspraying. Well, because it's such a, um, a subtle color anyway. Okay, here, I don't know if you can see, but um, see how the, it, it looks a little greenish on the screen, but it's not. It's a really golden, um, shimmery kind of look. So I'm going to keep on finishing. done so cool so 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 cool I I have a lot of uh, spray coverage on my keyboard but that's okay 
clean up my work area. Um, I, eh, uh, maybe I'll dry it a little bit. I'm not going to dry it too much. You know what? I'm going to skip the drying. I'm going to set it aside because I'm going to focus on the embellishments and maybe if it's still wet at that time, we'll readdress, we'll readdress the issue. Okay, I'm going to show you my embellishments. Um, I have a lot of vines. The Prima vine, this is primarily a Prima um, pumpkin. It's I primarily chose Prima products um, for embellishments. So I've got some leaves. I've got this beautiful, beautiful um, gold lace. And you know what? Cynthia will type in the name of the lace because I'm not even going to embarrass myself and, and try to pronounce it. Um, but it's part of Frank's new line. And um, Alda's got some in the store, I believe. So we're going to start off with the vines. And I need to um, give them a little dousing of ink as well. And this, these are the Prima. Um, they're 578251. I don't know if Alda has them in the store anymore. Uh, but I love them. I use them for everything. I'm going to use a package and a half. Only because I I used to package on my first pumpkin and it wasn't quite enough because I'm missing a couple leaves. So I'm going to cut it up. Um, maybe right there. And I'm going to save the rest of this. For later. Some other project. Okay. I want my leaves to be more green, a greenish. So I'm going to I'm going to give them some um, lime wedge. Color bloom. Lime wedge. And I'll wipe them off. Oops, this guy. That's all right. They don't have to be perfect. I just want, even if they have a little bit of green coverage, to me that's great. That's all I'm looking for. I, I chose some green because I don't want everything to be monochromatic on this pumpkin. I do want a little bit of punch of color. So I'm going to set those aside. Next, um, I've got some lace. I used brown lace um, kind of to accent the curves of the pumpkin a little bit. These pumpkin creases. If somebody could, if somebody, here's a challenge to the viewers. If somebody can tell me what the name of these are, tell Cynthia and have Cynthia send it to me. You know, these these lines in a pumpkin. It, they've got to have a, a name, but <laughs> you know me in words. They don't mix. I'm not articulate. Okay, so I decided I wanted my um, lace to be brown. So I have um, antique gold. It's antique gold color bloom, and it kind of has a nice little brown effect with a little bit of um, like a foil. I don't know, like a little bit of um, gold foil in it. Well, it does. <laughs> Jen, it's called antique gold after all, for a reason. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm ridiculous tonight. My whole night has uh, just, it's been thrown off. So I am wiping up as much of the gold foil mist as I can. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> this is not one of my more, of my prouder shows. Sorry. And I am going to set this aside. I think that when I use the, the heat gun, I'll just blow them all dry at once. There. There you go. Nah. Oh, my fingers all done. Woo, bad news. Bad news. Um, next, I have some flowers that I'm going to um, mist up a little bit. These I got from the store. They're Prima Flowers. They're called the Esperanza Trellas. Uh, 
they ha they're a nice blush, um, pinky orange like a coral. But guess what? I don't want coral. I want my pumpkin to be orange. I want the embellishments, the flowers to be orange. So I need to um, gussy them up a bit. Uh, there's a butterfly in the package too, but I'm going to set him aside. I don't think I want a butterfly. So I really want to gussy these up. I want to hide my um, greens because I don't want them orange. And I'm going to give them a little bit of color. I have another package of um, these ones are I don't know what these ones are. But they're of the same color family so I'm going to toss them in there and give them a punch of color too. So for the orange enhancement I'm going to um, use tangerine and gilded. Uh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Cynthia just um, texted me. It says, I don't know, it says their ribs. Oh, Vin I don't know. S their ribs. Pumpkin ribs. Who knew? <laughs> I sure as heck didn't. Um, oh, okay. So with the mist, you do really have to give them a shake and get the sediment from the bottom. Um, I'm ribs, pumpkin ribs. I don't even think that's a thing. I think I think somebody me made that up. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to doubt <laughs> I'm gonna have to doubt that. I like my own words better. Um, okay, and I'm going to add some gilded onto it because it's a little too um a little too tangerine-y. So I'm gonna add some. Tone it down with some gilded. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. I like this guy. But thank you for looking that up. I guess I'll have to go with ribs. Um, okay, that's great. This one's good. I'm going to move it aside. These are good. You know what? The gilded. Oh my gosh! It has this most beautiful um, gold sheen to it. Gilding. I'm betting. And I'm gonna hide these ones too. <laughs> I feel like a crafting nightmare tonight. I'm sorry. I just kind of feel all confused and discombobulated. There. Okay, great. And I'm going to pop a little more lime wedge on my leaves. So, I'm going to kind of play around with them a bit and see if I can isolate them better. Give it a, um, a shake. There. Fine. That's good. And this one. Good. Perfect. 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 I think I'm, I'm ready to get my heat gun out and dry these things. Let's pull them all back. trying to be efficient with my time since I was so totally inefficient before I'm trying to I'm trying to start um, okay so if you want when you're drying to just kind of scrunch the flowers up with your fingertips if the um, mists maybe flattened them out a little bit or playing with them like I did kind of flattened them out um, scratching them up with your fingertips brings them back to life. Uh, 
this guy. Well, he needs more orange. There. Oh, now, on the screen, at least on my screen, it looks like it's, um, wow, a really weird color orange. And I think that's because of the gilding. My um, camera's really picking up the gilding, which is very deceiving. But they really are a nice, beautiful, um, tangerine-y, corally combo. There. The good thing about these color blooms, like you saw, I was kind of um, dripping color into the flower a little bit. The, the color bloom mists are meant to, um, to be used two different ways, for drips or um, a full committed spray. And I used uh, the drip application just now. Um, it's really just how you press the lever down. The color blooms can also, for those of you who don't, who are new to the um, show or haven't seen the color blooms before, you can fill these again, fill them with water and stretch the life of the mist. You know, stretch the life of your product. Let's move that. Get the brown going. I will. I will get us out by ten still. I swear to you because. This is like the easy, de the decorating is the easy part. Let's get these. These are probably dry. Yeah, these are dry. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with my um, brown. I, st I stuck with the, um, I cut these in three, strips of threes and fives to stick with kind of that odd um, decorating rule, you know, how clusters and things look better in odds number odd numbers so that's kind of I use that same application for my um, fancy lace pumpkin ribs and I'm just gonna take my glue and glue them in there glue it down I didn't do it on all of the ribs Oh, the glue I'm using, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is um, Beacons 3-in-1 because it's a very, very um, durable, very sturdy, strong glue. And it works well with um, fabrics and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, multiple types of products like um, metals and wonderful for my burlap. So that's what I'm using. I think I'm just going to do four. Okay. My glue is like give, giving me sass now. Um, okay. That's all I'm doing for now for this one. And this is also where I said don't worry about the mess in the pumpkin um, in the burlap because this is also where you start hiding the folds. This, this right here was a crazy area. Oh, this was one of my crazy sections that was fighting with me. Well, no more. I won. I just covered it. So, have that, pumpkin. Um, okay, so now I'm going to... Oops! I'm going to add my vines. Um, just kind of... This one, I thought I would extend it and make it a little bigger by um, pulling it apart. And I want this curly cue. Oftentimes, I cut the curly cue off. I want it because I think it's, you know, a cool part of the pumpkin. See, see what I'm doing with that? I'm going to let it stick up and be like one of those pumpkin curls, a, a pumpkin vine. And I'm just going to glue it in there. I'm going to glue this down. So the decorating is the easy part. The, the more difficult part was the burlap. Um, but the decorating, heck, that's easy. I'm just going to glue it down. You know what? I also um, might be a really great idea is to take, um, once you're done, once your vines are done and your flowers are on, um, is to go back and um, 
maybe attach them with the hemp twine a little bit to secure it and make it a project that will be a little more durable um, and you can pull out year after year instead of, you know, kind of more of a temporary project that will fall apart when you store it. So this one I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to kind of just um, glue it on and drape the, the vines around the pumpkin. I, I have to, I think in my head, I have to define a front. So I think I'm going to define this as my front. It just, yeah, I'm going to define that as my front. Um, I'm going to keep adding my vines. Now these, this, I like these vines because they have these little curly cue um, tendrils and I, I really like working with them, but sometimes I think they're a little too long. So I like to share the wealth. I'm going to take the tendril. Oh God, I've got like burlap stuck to my fingers. <laughs> I'm going to go to work tomorrow with like burlap hanging off me. Um, okay. I like to cut the tendril and I'm going to stretch stretch it out, cut this one, stretch it out, and then I've got these extra tendril pieces that I can tuck in in other spots of the pumpkin after, um, you know, as I need filler once I'm nearing completion. So this piece I'm going to drape around the back side of it right there. Lots of glue, gobs of glue, gobs of glue, because I want this to be durable. I am hiding one of these little leaves. I don't want to hide it, so I'm going to make sure I, um, it was one of the vine leaves. I didn't want it hidden, so I'm making sure I just pull it up so that it's visible. I don't want to waste any of the, the leaves. Um, this guy, I think he'll just go. There, I think I'll do that. I wanted one of the, I think this is a good one. This is a good vine to keep a little bit longer and create a little um, imbalance to your pumpkin. Um, just a, an a little more interest so that everything is not um, symmetrical around the top of the pumpkin. That's kind of boring. I think that's what I was also trying to do um, with my longer pieces of um, lace in the pumpkin ribs. Stick this guy in there. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, now we're going to cut to this gorgeous lace. Gorgeous lace. I cut it apart. Very simple. Um, and it's just going to be a gorgeous gold, antique gold looking accent to my pumpkin. And I'm gluing them on, in like on the top um, ridges of the pumpkin, in between the pumpkin ribs. I'm well, thank you for at least um, giving me a word that I can use to define that special part of the pumpkin instead of dancing around the definition all night saying, like, this piece, this whatever this thing is. You've at least given me words that I can use. Use my words. Okay, see, another ugly, ugly, ugly part to my burlap. Well no more. It's going to get covered by this gold medallion. And th that is the beauty of paper crafting. Anything can be covered. And now it becomes a beautiful spot. There you go. But if you, if Alda has any of these um, in the store, I would be thinking about um, skipping on over to the store, the unicorn store, and snagging them up because uh, they're just so versatile and so gorgeous.
Whoops, 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 whoops. Tuck it in, stick it in, tuck it in. They don't lie flat. They can lie flat if you really want them to, but um, I I don't want them to lie flat. They, they would kind of look fake. Well, not that gold lace on a pumpkin looks real. <laughs> what am I saying? It's just that you don't want it look to look too processed, too over-processed. How about that? Let's stick this in there. And you, you know what? The great thing about this project, this type of project, is you can grab anything that you've got in your stash and add it to the pumpkin and make it look dazzling. Um, it, you know, it doesn't have to be pumpkin colors or, or um, autumn colors. It could be, you know, anything. Blues and purples or just... And that's, that's what makes altered art so cool. Just only limited by your imagination. Okay, there we go. And toss this aside. I've got some other um, flowers that I want to add in. Uh, um, just berries and some um, pretty leaves with glitter on the end. This is from the Victorian Christmas collection. This one's called Victorian um, Christmas Red Stocking. And it's just berries. So I'm going to cut up the berry. I'm not going to use them in big pieces. I'm going to cut them in smaller, um, more manageable pieces. And I'm going to just tuck it in here and there and start really filling out the cluster. Right now my cluster, my clustering at the top is a little sparse. And so this is where I start filling in um, and making it look thick and um, lush. Just here and there. All around the pumpkin. The pumpkin, although it does have a front, a sort of a front, where, it, you know, when I put it on my table, um, it'll face the way I want it to. It really doesn't have a, you know, a front and a back. So that's why you kind of want to pay attention to the details going all the way um, around the pumpkin. So I've got these leaves, and I'm also going to tuck them in as filler. In between my green leaves and my orange. Oh, so this is where, in situations like this, this is where you pull out your handy wood skewer, and you use it to um, tuck the, the embellishment in um, a little more securely. So I'm going to use it to tuck right like that. See how it's really starting to um, fill out? A couple more and um, there. Kind of like that so far. I can I can add more um, you know as I maybe tomorrow morning this often happens to me. Tomorrow morning, I'll get up and I'll be like, oh, you know what? That, that's looking a little sparse. Maybe I, uh, I need to um, fill it in with another leaf or something. So that's how I, can, that's how I usually approach my projects. Um, I sleep on it. I've got these. Um, oh, my. And I'm getting a little messy here. A little messy. I have these um, Shabby Chic Treasures resin embellishments. I'm going to take an acorn. I think I'm going to take two acorns. I'm going to give them a pop of um, mist. The embellishments or the resins hold mist really nicely. Uh, so I often color my resins with mist. This one is the antique gold. And I'm spraying my acorns. And move them aside. You do need to dry them with the heat gun. I think. And then I'm going to add some... What am I going to add? 
I want to add some, I'll add some tea stain. Because this tea stain, the antique gold is a little more of rich of a, maybe a, a, a dark chocolate. And the tea stain adds a, a nice light golden caramel tone to it. I'm going to blow dry them. They also dry quickly with the heat gun, so no worries here. I still get you. I still get you out on time. Um, I might add some gold foil to it if I can find where. Yeah, I'm not happy with the color yet. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a little better. That's kind of that's kind of what I want. You know, that's that's the nice thing about the mists too. You can just the mist with the resins, you can just keep spraying and wiping off if it doesn't suit your fancy and, and mist something else. If you're just starting off, and I, I think that there's um, a, a couple gals who were going to join us tonight who were kind of new to mists and starting off, um, you might want to really think about adding a couple of the color blue mists to your stash start you know if you want to start with um, a neutral softer tone think about the tea stains or um, you know the the gilded is nice uh, the gold foil something like that where it's a more of a versatile color and you can um, apply it to so many more things before you go off and start getting crazy with um, you know, wild colors like tangerine or, well, I like the tangerine. It's awfully pretty. Okay, I'm tucking these, I'm tucking the resins in there, just sticking them in there. Um, then, let's see, I've got some berries, <laughs> because we love our um, dingle berries. Thank you, Heather. Um, yep, I, I've got these berries. I buy them at, well, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, wherever you can find, or whatever craft store. I buy whatever's in season, and let's clean this up, and um, use them for filler, excuse me, for filler. So I'm going to dab a ton of glue on them, and just stick them in. And I, you know, they hang off a little bit, that's great. I want them to hang a little um, long, and add some interest some wild, crazy interest to the piece. This guy is gonna... See, once you get the pumpkin down and covered, the magic just kind of... The rest of the magic happens quickly. Oh, see, that one was perfect. That one went perfect right there. Kind of to fill in the, the um, ribs. The pumpkin ribs. Pumpkin ribs. <laughs> That's silly. That one, a little berry there. You don't need a lot of berries, but they, they're great filler for cards and layouts, and they're cheap as heck. Okay, there. Um, and then my last, my last little thing, I think, because I always forget stuff, are um, my, my beads. I've added some beads, and all I did to this was I, um, I glue, I didn't bother with gel mediums or anything. I just took my glue glue, added some glue, gloppy glue, and um, poured a little bit of bead. These are um, micro beads. So I've got some gold micro beads there. Press them in with my fingers. And then I've got um, some Prima glass beads. These ones happen to be butter. But they've got all, all colors. They've, there's um, gorgeous, gorgeous colors. Prima's got an array of wonderful um, art ingredients that just make nice finishing touches on pieces so that is all I'm doing here and there I'm not doing it on all the ribs but just a little here and there and um, I'll do one more and that's pretty much it that's pretty much it to my pumpkin you know it was quite an easy project 
I, I can't lie. I cannot lie to you. The glue, the spray adhesive is a little messy, but um, it's okay. For one or two projects, you can handle it. You can handle the mess. Um, and there is my pumpkin. Simple, simple, quick. So let's see if I can um, turn the camera back up to me. There I am. So, <laughs> thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys put up with a lot tonight um, on this broadcast, so I really appreciate it. Uh, sorry. My um, deepest apologies for starting late. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. My Chrome browser wasn't working because Cynthia said there was an update today. So um, being that I was at work all day, didn't get my update. Um, so anyways, thank you for attending tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, next week is song and she always has a great show. And um, anything that's in the that I used in the, on the show tonight that is um, available in the store is 10% off. Um, and the 31st on Saturday, Halloween, is our November kit release. And it's a really, really fun and fabulous kit, as they all are. But um, this one's very, very fascinating and, and fun. So um, thank you, and have a great night. See if I can stop.